मैं डॉक्टर आरिफ अहमद हाजिर हूँ एलर्जी की जानकारी के साथ दिस इज अवर नाइन एपिसोड ऑन एलर्जी एंड द सेकेंड ऑफ द थ्री एपिसोड दैट वी हैव ऑन फूड एलर्जी टूडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग द अप्रोच टू फूड एलर्जी एंड वी हैव द प्लेजर ऑफ डॉक्टर मारिया टू डिस्कस विथ अस द अप्रोच टू फूड एलर्जी थैंक यू डॉक्टर मारिया फॉर कमिंग अगेन टू अर शो टूडे Thank you so much Dr. Arif for having me here again today. As you know in our last episode we focused more on the basics of food allergy. In this episode as you said I would like to ask you a couple of questions focusing more on the approach to food allergy. Dr. Arif I have a friend who develops rashes on eating chicken. Although she's completely stopped eating chicken she still gets these rashes. They're completely confused. Why do you think that is? I don't blame them at all. This is a very common scenario that we see in clinical practice. Mari, you know that famous quotation from Sherlock Holmes? Do you recall? Oh yes, I know what you're talking about. There is nothing more deceptive than the obvious fact. Yeah. A meaning jo dikhta hai wo nahi hai. In law, if you are seen multiple times at the scene of crime, then the probability of you being the criminal is high. But you are guilty beyond reasonable doubt if only there is no other evidence found in your case the culprit or the billa from the famous billa ranga case is the chicken but you should know that there are many ingredients which go in the making of the chicken such as cashew nuts and any of these could be the reason behind the rashes i had a patient who was allergic to grilled chicken to which nothing is added but ultimately it turned out that it was due to the colorants and there is no test for checking against these colorants oh i see that's very interesting but however what does timing have to do with all of this it's very important for this ige mediated allergy it should occur within minutes to a maximum of within 4 to 6 hours right okay dr arif okay suppose once you suspected a particular allergy How would you test for it? You remember Maria we discussed about this blood test in an earlier episode which isn't as reliable as the skin prick testing. Oh yes, the skin prick test. You had demonstrated that on me in the 7th episode I yes. think. Um which one would you choose? The skin prick test or the blood test? Undoubtedly the skin prick test except in certain cases where we do the component analysis of the food allergens where we need to predict the outcome or in certain conditions known as wheat dependent exercise induced anaphylaxis right um and what is that in certain patients we eat wheat and take rest and nothing happens but you eat wheat and you exercise or even maybe have a bath and suddenly you develop a severe reaction all over the body oh that's interesting I always remember as a child you know my parents telling me nashte ke baad kabhi naan aane it's in our culture and we have observed this and that's why we have always from the beginning been taking this precaution although we never knew why we were doing it but now we know the reason for it oh right that makes sense this all must be very difficult to diagnose though yes it is difficult to diagnose sometimes the skin prick test may be negative but we have with this new test component analysis the molecule which is causing this allergy can be identified okay so suppose the blood test or if the skin prick test if either of these are positive then can you confidently say that this person is allergic to this particular food if the skin response to this particular allergen or food is positive and is large then you can confidently stop that particular food but otherwise you should always challenge the patient and the most ideal way of doing the challenge to that particular food would be in the hospital setting in a hospital but why not at home if there's a reaction then all the available means are ready and this specially so for certain foods which are highly allergenic such as peanuts tree nuts fish eggs milk and pulses okay dr arif but suppose a patient is positive for this test but she can still eat this food comfortably then what would you say would she have to still stop eating this yes maria in that case you don't need to stop eating right and um can you please explain how would you do this challenge 
it should always be done in the morning and on an empty stomach and you have to take the most pure form of the food if it is chicken then it has to be boiled chicken with no added substances if you are taking nuts then you start with a small piece or with a single piece and you keep doubling it every 10 to 15 minutes for the next 1 to 2 hours and after the end of that 1 to 2 hours if there's no reaction then you are not allergic to that particular food oh okay and another question for you and i'm sure a lot of people have the same question what if the skin test is negative but i still have doubts in such a scenario you can do a home challenge after taking all the due precautions as advised by your doctor right okay well anyway i think we've covered this section uh i would like to ask you something that i see very often in my life i have friends who say they're allergic to this and they're allergic to this i feel like it's all psychological what would you have to say about that the best way in the psychological food intolerance is to take that particular food it may be a vegetable or a fruit prick the food and prick the skin wait for 20 minutes see if there's any reaction if there's no reaction then it is negative he is not allergic to that particular food it is only psychological food intolerance oh that's actually very simple anyway now that we've discussed testing for food allergy how would you test for a non ige mediated reaction and that is very tricky in this both the blood test as well as the skin prick test will be negative in such a scenario what you do is the challenge and elimination method or the elimination challenge method eliminate and challenge method what is that all you need to do is to remove the suspected food from the patient's diet in every form for at least 2 weeks and if there are no symptoms for the next 2 weeks then again you challenge him with that very same substance of the food for the next 2 weeks and see if the symptoms recur in that simple Well, Dr. Arif, I have to say this entire method it reminds me of that one statement from Sherlock Holmes where he says it's elementary, my dear Watson. Anyway, this episode I clarified with you whatever questions I had about the approach to food allergy. In our next episode, I would like to talk to you about the treatment of food allergy. Oh, and another thing, if our viewers have any questions that they would like to ask please send them on this number so that we can address them for you thank you dr maria for being with us it was a pleasure having you on this episode of the approach to food allergy and i really look forward to our next episode on the treatment of food allergy with that added thing on the questions from the viewers this is our, our ninth episode aur hame ummeed hai aapko pasand aaya hoga kyunki ye sare videos banane ka hamara sirf ek hi maqsad hai ki allergy ki jankari zyada se zyada logon tak pahunchaye और चिराग से चिराग जलाए